Hey guys, man, today it just seemed like my heart rate was up and so was my irritability levels. Sometimes I just got to take a goss pill and chill. You know, and I think Susie's already taken and, uh, me answering comments smooth away from me. I suppose she'll be answering them for a while. I'm going to take a goss pill and calm down, man. The Jesus is coming, and I know it, and, man, I am so ready to go. But, guys, whenever I get the feeling like this, I just got to run to God's Word. I can always find comfort from Scripture, and that tells me that you can too. And I'm just going to share a little short message and preach myself happy. But I also came across a prophetic word I had given a while back, and, and that word literally encouraged me today. I'm going to replay it at the end of, of this little message, and I'm praying you'll be encouraged too. Guys, we're literally in the last seconds of the last days, and we see fear gripping the whole world. You know, we've seen where rocket man's firing off rockets, and, and there's no telling what the bear up north is going to do. There's been so much talk about nuclear exchange lately. I, there's nobody actually that knows what tomorrow holds. I'm just grateful that our God does, though, guys. Our God holds tomorrow. He holds our lives in his hands. Our God is already in our tomorrow. And, and, and all we have to do is just walk right through it. But you know what? God will be with us every step of the way. And uh, I, I just can't help but feel that the rapture of the church is just so very close at hand. Uh, I keep thinking, man, I'm literally getting ready to see Jesus face to face. It's become such a reality. But guys, help me preach myself happy. <laughs> you guys can pray for me. But anyway, I'm going to try my best to hang on to my faith. Uh, I know we would love to say that faith makes the problems of life disappear. How grand would it be if we could live our lives without hassle, discouragement, or frustration, or disappointments? Sadly, we know this is not the case. We are never removed from the frailty or disappointments of life. One such disappointment is concerning the rapture of the church. Guys, keep believing. Keep believing that the believing will be leaving at any time. God loves us unconditionally, and God wants that same type of love from us in return. Don't just love the Lord thinking the rapture will be on a certain day and then when it comes and goes, you decide to fall back into despair with a crushing and very disappointed mindset. Don't just love God on the condition the rapture is about to happen on any certain day or anything like it, but love God unconditionally, just like he loves us, whether or not it comes. Whatever comes or does not come, let's keep our eyes fixed by keeping them fixed on Jesus. But guys, I'm going to keep looking at this day and every day as being a day that's one day closer to the rapture. And I also look at it like an opportunity for one more person to get saved. That very one could be one of your loved ones. The rapture really is coming and we really are going. Don't Lose hope in the God of hope. Guys, we all do go through many times of burdens, trials, hardship, and struggles. There are even seasons where we feel we have been tossed into the fiery furnace of affliction. What does give me strength in my weakened moments in life is remembering the early Christians being burned at the stake and being fed to the lions and and thinking about the heroes of faith found in Hebrews chapter 11. Even in more recent times, during our lifetime in the 21st century, there have been Christians beheaded for their faith. 
I pray, may God have mercy on us all. God's response to the fiery furnaces of our lives isn't to destroy us, but to dwell in us. This is what is shown in this beloved book of Daniel. More importantly, this is what is revealed on the cross. The cross testifies that there is no place where the loving power of God will not be present. The cross, which is the most extreme example of the world's rejection, is transformed into the place where Christ's relentless love is disclosed. It hurts when we find ourselves in the fire. It hurts when we have been greatly disappointed or let down. It is fearful and dark, yet we are not alone. Christ enters that darkness and bears that hurt. There is no place in our lives where Christ is not present. Jesus promises, surely I am with you to the very end of the age, Matthew twenty-eight twenty. If you find yourself overwhelmed by struggles or stresses, simply repeat this truth. In fact, try inserting your name at the start of the verse as a way to hear this declaration spoken directly over you. I pray that you know the presence of the one who journeys with you. Let's keep our eyes opened to the presence of our Savior as he stands with us and extends his power over us. Guys, just know that darkness cannot overcome the light. John 1, five says, And the light shineth in, in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I know of no great Christian leader who hasn't faced a fiery trial in life. Guys, we are going to face opposition as we seek to do God's will. But the truth is that darkness does not have the power to overcome light. Every believer can overcome any attack if they won't quit first. Darkness does not have the ability to suppress or to hold the light under its domain. This doesn't mean that darkness won't attempt to over, overcome the light. However, its efforts will be frustrated and unsuccessful because the light of God always prevails, even in what seems to be the darkest or bleakest situation. Darkness simply doesn't have the power or ability to put out God's light. Since you and I are a child of the light, as found in Ephesians 5, 8, this means darkness does not have the ability to put out our light either. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The word overcometh is a Greek word nikos. It means to conquer. It was used to portray athletes who had gained the mastery of the competition and ultimately reigned supreme as champions over the games. The Holy Spirit was careful in his selection of this Greek word nikos. This word communicates vivid images that pertain to our walk of faith and victory. First, it tells us that when we begin the walk of faith, we enter into a real life competition. The decision to walk by faith puts it puts us right smack dab in the center of the ring where the contest immediately begins. This is so important to understand because too often we wrongly presume that if we walk by faith, we will be removed from all problems. But our faith puts us directly opposite the devil's powers. He hates our faith because he knows what it can do. For this reason, Satan may try to go for a knockout punch, but even if he knocks us flat, he can't keep us down on the ground. In 2 Corinthians 4, 9, the apostle Paul testified to this when he said that he was cast down but not destroyed. Those who are born of God have the supernatural ability to keep getting up again, no matter how many times 
they fall. Remember, John wrote, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Because the word overcometh is the Greek word nikos, it tells us that we are the ultimate champions and describes our superior position as children of God over the world. We are fully armed. We are heavenly armed with everything we need to be super conquerors in this life, even to conquer the feelings of letdown and disappointment because the rapture hasn't happened yet. Satan, as a god of this world, as we would see in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, tries his best to use the world around us to do battle against us. But regardless of what weapon Satan uses or how he attempts to combat you and me, 1 John 5, 4 declares that we have a faith that overcomes the world. This means we have a faith that overrides and supersedes any organization, any event, any circumstance, or any difficult dilemma Satan would try to employ against us. He may be the God of this world, but we have a weapon so powerful that we can shoot him down every time he shows up uninvited. John 1, 5 makes it absolutely clear that darkness does not have the ability to suppress or to hold the light under its domain. Darkness may try to prevent the light from shining, but it never holds back the light permanently. Eventually, it always comes shining through. This is true of you and me and your hopes and dreams and visions and calling as well. You may feel hindered from time to time in your attempts to fulfill the call God has given you, but don't despair. Those hindrances cannot last long. They cannot last forever. The only way the devil can steal your dream, vision, or calling is if you surrender to him first. If you hold on and refuse to give up, your faith will overcome every encumbrance the devil tries to set in your path. Guys, let's let this be our prayer for the day. Lord, when we feel overwhelmed by fiery furnaces, open our eyes to see you with us. Help us to feel the comforting balm of your presence as you uphold our life. We thank you, Lord, that darkness does not have the power to overcome us. It may try, but your word guarantees that darkness doesn't have the ability to overcome the light. We are so thankful that we are your children and that we live on the on the winning side. When the devil tries to discourage us, help us remember that in the end, we win. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, let's make a confession of faith for this very day. We boldly confess that even if we get knocked down, we never get knocked out. We possess the supernatural ability to keep getting up again because we are born of God and we overcome the world. Regardless of what weapon Satan uses or how he attempts to combat us, our faith overrides and supersedes any event, any circumstance, any disappointment, and any difficult dilemma Satan would try to employ against us. We declare this so in Jesus' name. Guys, no matter what life throws at us, let's remain standing Jesus strong. We really are going to rapture out of here at any time. Don't lose heart. One day, really soon, all your tears will be wiped away for all eternity. We care for you. We love you guys. We will continue praying for you as well. When I'm feeling weakness on any given day, I will find strength in the Holy Spirit and in God's Word, and I want you to do the same. Guys, I'll be playing that reposted prophetic word just right after this. 
I pray that you're encouraged. It encouraged me. But I just want to say this. It all remains true. We fly soon. God bless each and every one of you and Maranatha. I sense the Spirit of the Lord speaking to my heart and saying, My wings of protection hover over you in this hour. What you felt would come to destroy you will disappear before it finds you. I have worked out all of the details. Stumbling blocks are being removed. Snares will spring upon the enemy instead. Be wise among your days. Be diligent in your actions. Be sensitive to my still, small voice. What you have been waiting for is surely on the horizon. Your time in waiting will be nothing but a forgotten memory soon. Come and gaze into my glory. I will give unto you new eyes, my eyes, that will give you true understanding. I call you to look through my eyes, says the Lord. When you look through my eyes, the world around you will change. When you see the sick, I see them healed. When you see the lost, I see them saved. When you see darkness approaching you, I see the enemy defeated. And when I look at you, I see you completed, made whole, and beautiful with nothing, absolutely nothing lacking. When you see ashes, I see beauty. When you see limitations, I see miracles. When you look upon heartache and pain, I see future breakthrough and deliverance. When you begin to look with my eyes, you will see everything will begin to change. When you see yourself struggling, I see you as a conqueror. When you see your failures, I see you victorious and your wilderness of life blossoming like a rose. Anoint your eyes with love. My love, says the Lord. Love is the healing I salve. And then you will see the sunrise even in the greatest of darkness. Come to me and I will cause you to clearly see the day in which you are living. Though many are seeing doom, I see glory. When many see devastation, I see my power bringing deliverance. I see the end from the beginning. When you look through my eyes of love, you will see things as they truly are. Crooked things will straighten. Weak and feeble people will strengthen with power. I call you to come before me and gaze upon me. Can I not turn your sorrow into dancing? I am well able to turn your heart to overflowing. I am well able to turn your darkness into light. This is how those called by my name will live and move and speak. I will complete the good work I had begun in you until all of you are consumed in me. I will show you the secrets of what is to come. I give you this day true vision that springs from revelation and understanding. Your eyes will be anointed to see beyond the moment and call things that are, that are not as though they were. I have given you this gift of discerning grace that you might bring hope where others have lost courage. As surely as you have seen great change in this world, there is another change that is yet to come so very very, very soon. You will be changed in a moment's time, in the twinkling of an eye, and so shall you be with your God and Savior throughout all eternity. My coming is very close at hand, and I will not delay. Do not fear the threats and storms of your enemy. Just know your enemy is underneath my feet, and he is a defeated foe, thus says the Lord God. Glory to God in the highest. Our most high God is well able to give us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
Father, heal each one within the sound of our voice, God. Fill them with hope. Fill them with health. Fill them with supernatural strength, O oh God. And if any one of them needs to become born again, save them to the uttermost. Lord, when we are weak and weary, help us to remember from where our hope truly comes. By your grace, keep us from misplacing our faith in worldly things for support. Strengthen us to endure all hardships with confidence, knowing every promise you made will come true. We ask you would rise within each of us and empower us to live better and never bitter. Amen. Be our shalom peace. Keep us within your secret place, high above all turmoils of life. Be God our healer. We ask when we are sick, you would saturate each of us with the healing balm of Gilead, causing us to be free from all pain and sickness. Be God our deliverer and free us from all bondages yes. and evil of this world. We ask you would always restore, renew, and revive each of us all the days of our lives. Yes. Be our strength when we're feeling we cannot go on. Free us from the weight of all worry and fear. Give us rest from the struggles we daily encounter that are wearing us down. We will remember that you, Lord, are with us. You are here. You are powerful. And you are in control. Thank you, Lord, that we can put our hope in you because you are our hope. Though the world may be falling apart all around us, we will yet praise your name. We will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and our fortress. Our God will always be our wraparound shield all the days of our lives. You are our Savior. You are our God. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that we can always turn to you and find peace. Be our peace today and always. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. And we will believe by faith that all these things are done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Guys, we can talk a little bit about the gospel that's found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. Verse 4 says, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Amen. Guys, those are shouting words. Yes, they are. I'm just going to turn it over to Susie and let her present the ABCs of salvation. Hallelujah. And how many know that salvation is as easy as ABC? Yes, it is. The ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. This is where the godly sorrow leads to genuine repentance for sinning against the righteous God. And there is a change of heart. We change our mind and God changes our hearts and regenerates us from the inside out. Amen. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins Amen. and was buried and that God raised Jesus from the dead. This is trusting with all your heart that Jesus Christ is who he said Amen. he is. Call upon the name of the Lord. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and will believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Every single person who has ever lived since Adam will bend their knee and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Amen. 
If you want to become born again today, then say something like this. Lord, you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. I confess now that Jesus is my Lord and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. For it is with my heart I believe and am justified, and it is with my mouth that I confess and am saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in you will never be put to shame. You said that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and cleansing me and forgiving all my sins, past, present, and future, and for giving me eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you have prayed this prayer, you are now a child of God. Amen. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Welcome. Amen to the family of God. Amen. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house, and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, Watch. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 